whenever dealing with holidays, I always see a tendency among people in general to go through kind of a post-holiday depression. <laughs> it's almost like postpartum depression. It's like after the, the hype and the energy level being so high for so long of trying to be with family or experience the holidays or find out some news from relatives that you didn't know before because you went and visited or the idea of beginning to settle back down into a daily routine and now that it's winter of course it's a long haul to seeing more light on the subject or having more energy levels to begin to rise back up now for some people they love the winter so they enjoy going out in the snow which if you think about it snow has a lot of light in it <laughs> it's awful bright <laughs> so sometimes one of the things you might do with this post-holiday depression is you might consider getting more light because what we do know about the physical body is that if it doesn't get enough light then there are certain levels of chemicals that are in their makeup of your body called your physiology that if they become imbalanced then they cause depression I mean it's not like some enemy attack or anything it's just a natural progression of what the body does in order to maintain its proper health and we call that physiology and that's the way of maintaining in your body a certain amount of fluids and a certain amount of vitamins and minerals and all the things that keep a person properly balanced you know in their emotions and so knowing that that can become imbalanced by light there are a lot of people that actually in the winter go through light therapy they make sure that their houses are extra lit up at night or there's more light coming in and they they exercise more you know because that also produces some chemicals that balance things out so for me I know I've lived in Alaska in the northern hemispheres where after oh I guess about four or five years I finally suffered from the lack of light and went through a depression for over a year and even tried for two weeks some of that you know, antidepressant stuff you know and man you know I was like talk about not phased by anything <laughs> It only worked for about three days, then all of a sudden I guess God intervened and no longer worked, so I finally took myself off it and said, you know, this is kind of wacko. <laughs> but just like your body needs light at this time of year, make sure it gets it, you know, somehow, some way, you know, either get full spectrum lighting, you know, and you can get them in the new bulbs, you know, they're kind of like plant growth, growth bulbs, it works, you know, you need full light. So too, your emotions, your soul and your spirit needs light and Jesus is the light of the world he is the one who gives us that proper filling and feeling when it's in balance that if we stick with him then we have the light of the world in us so that we don't become imbalanced and become constantly depressed because you see at this time of year when you've heard and enjoyed the holidays you may have also seen things that you really didn't like like you know some devastation or some destruction or some terrorism attack or some other thing that maybe caused some really sorrowful times to come into your life and you really couldn't handle it because you were kind of like off kilter and out of sync because you went on a holiday and you didn't keep up with your devotions or you went visiting and you didn't go to church on Sundays or whatever it may be and God understands that and it's not like he oppresses us because he always accepts us but you see people around us now that's a different story they can influence us sometimes by the pressure that we feel sometimes called peer pressure but there's also something else besides peer pressure and that's called personal pressure your own ideas your own standards that you set for yourself that you may have failed in or fallen down on your own personal pressure that you've applied to your conscience that makes you feel guilty now as though you know you really blew it and you don't know if God will forgive you 
I mean, those are personal pressures that really shouldn't be there because, you see, God loves you. God has always loved you, and God will always love you till the day you die, and He accepts you home because He knows what you're going through. He sent His Son to let you know that He would experience the same thing you've gone through. So in doing so, we can relate to God in a personal and intimate way that causes us to remind ourselves when we are down or depressed or we're suffering from post, I like to say more, the inability to discipline ourselves in a constant way where we could just have fun in a kind of like smooth, rolling, wave-like motion. But instead, when we do holidays, it's usually like skyrockets, you know, and you go blasting off into the sky and then you explode all over everyone with joy. And then you come down. And that's what happens sometimes even in worship services. People get all so excited and then afterwards they're, they're wiped out. And that's why you see a lot of letdown after church services. So too, in these holidays, you see a lot of letdown and even post-holiday depressions from just not having everything in balance and not enough light in your soul, in your spirit, and in your physical body. When you feel out of focus, most of the world feels that way one time or another, even those who seem to have everything to make them happy. Unfortunately, this also includes many Christians. How have, have you ever wondered why, especially here on the North American continent where we live in a land of plenty, and even though the economy has turned, we still have more than most nations do. No nation has greater access to Christian literature, teaching, and programming than we do. And currently, at least no other body of Christians has as much religious freedom as do the Christians in North America. Yet for all our freedom, for all our resources, we are a hurting, miserable, and relatively impotent people. We are ignorant of the power which is in us. As I sat meditating on the first week's study in Henry Blackaby and Claude King's Experiencing God, a devotional, the statement, the focus needs to be on God and not on life, caught my attention. Suddenly it all clicked into place. Misery comes when we, when we are the focus of our lives. Reason with me for a moment. Where is much of the emphasis in the world today? Isn't it on self? I mean, self-help, self-will, self-determination, self-amusement, self-development, self-self-self. Isn't it interesting that there is certainly the focus in our society with self-esteem, self-actualization, self-fulfillment? But think about the emphasis in much of our Christian teaching, our Christian books and seminars and radio and television. Isn't it? also on self, on how we can be what God wants us to be, how we can fulfill our purpose for Him, how we can be His hands and feet about us and not Him. And what is this focus accomplishing? Are the majority of Christians any happier? Are they more productive? Are they walking in greater power? Are they being used of God to impact their society? Statistics, frankly, tell us, no, they aren't. However, when God becomes a focus rather than self, then everything takes second place to His will for our lives. In essence, nothing else really matters. He is the only one whom we have to please. He is the only one to whom we are truly and rightly answerable. You see, that's what we try to emphasize on a consistent basis of lately in the 21st century, 20th century, how it's not about religion, because religion is nice, you know, it's nice, it can work in a certain degree up to a point, but it's not relationship, because religion will have you have old counseling sessions where, you know, it can make you feel better, or work this out, and work that out. But you see, in a relationship, when you love someone, when you really want to please someone, when you really want to enjoy someone's company, you spend a lot of time with them. You get all dressed up. You put on your best clothes, you wash your face, you comb your hair, you put on your eyebrows. <laughs> okay, maybe some of us already got them. But you get prepared to spend time with the person you care about. 
And if it's God, wow, he's bigger than anybody you ever met before. So wouldn't you get twice as much prepared to enjoy your company with him? So you see, there's a misunderstanding sometimes about getting and focusing and being excited about him. Or are we just going to get from him what we want? The difference will make whether you look forward to your time of devotions with him now. Wow, God, look at what you just wrote in the sky for me. Cool. I'd almost take the camera and show you, but <laughs> it's just for me. I'm sorry, you'll have to do your own. But when I spend time with my father, it's like even my wife watches. She goes, man, you're like lit up. It's like it's almost as though you're a different person. And I am because then my spirit is revived and I'm excited and it's like, yeah, God, I hear you, I see you, I understand, it makes so much sense, it's perfect, and it's so much joy then. Of course, you know, after spending time with God, I walk back out with my dad, I'm kind of like, all right, let's go do our thing. <laughs> so I'm just like you. But you see, that depression and that downtime was caused because you got so obsessed with enjoying for yourself and others rather than participating with God and what He's doing. Because if you ever noticed, when you do things with God and participate with Him, He brings a joy that seems to never end. It just keeps kind of bubbling up. It's just an artesian. It's a constant stream that goes outward and it affects everyone around you. Big difference. And you don't feel depressed about it. Now when you cut off that stream and you start refocusing in on yourself, like, oh no, what am I going to do? Instead of, wow God, look at this. I just got an eviction notice. What are you going to do about it? Big difference. It's funny how that works when you change the focus of your attention because you see you can look up and see the heavens open up before you and the salvation God brings or you could look around you and see all the problems that exist in your life and all the circumstances that are going to drown you or you can look down trip over your own feet <laughs> but the choice is yours today which way you'll go the focus ought to be on spending that time recognizing that you got a chance to talk to God today. You got a chance to walk with Him and see what He's going to do. Lord, look at this, man. I'm going to lay all these bills out and I can't afford them. So what do you want me to do about them? And see what He'll do. You may be shocked out of your shorts. Maybe even out of your house. <laughs> and then God will bring something different. I didn't say better. I'm not one of those people. But God will do for you so much more than you can do if you'll just turn the focus of your attention on Him and not on yourself.